I have with me Dominic, who is a member of the Socialist Party Southwest Region and a Unison Shop Steward. In November, Robert Service, who is a professor of history at Oxford University, published a biography of Leon Trotsky, one of the leaders of the 1917 October Revolution and one of the founders of the Soviet Union. The stated aim of Service's book is, and I quote, to give a balanced and truthful account of the life and actions of Trotsky, which have been monopolised by the Trotskyist left, and to put the record straight on Trotsky's misleading and self-serving account of his defeat by Stalin. Dominic, what impression did you get from reading this book? Well, in the book, as as it states, is meant to be an actual biography, or purely a biography of an individual, Leon Trotsky. But when you look at the life and times of such an individual, you can't really separate it out from the great political events uh, that took place in the time that he was alive, the Russian Revolution, the rise of the Soviet Union, and so on. So, Although it's ostensibly about one individual, Leon Trotsky, in reality, what Service is doing throughout his book is looking at these great historical events from his political standpoint. And his political standpoint throughout the book is uh, opposition to socialism, opposition to the very idea of the October Revolution, support for what he calls liberal democracy, although he never goes into any specific detail about what liberal democracy actually is and reading through the book if someone wants to find out what these great events actually meant there is very little actual information to go on if you look at two crucial points for example the nature of the first world war which led to the Russian revolution itself he does service to be fair to him does actually show what Trotsky thought the war was that Trotsky called this an imperialist war and he doesn't really counter that view of Trotsky that Trotsky put forward but he does put the word imperialist a few times in the pages in inverted commas to show that he doesn't approve of that point of view uh, and also more importantly even than that the question of the Soviets he says, for example, in February 1917, when there was an uprising against the Russian Tsar Nicholas II, that workers and soldiers, he, he quotes, set up Soviets. Now, the reader can uh, see that the Soviets were some kind of elected body, but there's no actual explanation as to what they were, who elected these Soviets, what the rights and duties were of the people who were elected to the Soviets. The First World War, from a, at least from a French and British point of view, was a fight to defend democracy. But as Trotsky uh, pointed out, that war aim was really quite limited. Both Britain, France, Germany, Italy and, and even Belgium had big colonial empires. If you look at the case just of Britain, which had a colonial empire of maybe two, three hundred million people, they had absolutely no democratic rights. So this idea that Britain was fighting for democracy against the, the, the bad Germans it really doesn't stand up to any scrutiny. The peoples of Africa and Asia had no say whether they had independence or, uh, or had no democratic rights at all. The other aim of the war was to divide working people in the various countries from each other because in a number of countries there were a lot of strikes. In Russia itself in 1914 a revolutionary situation was developing in Britain and Ireland. There were a number of uh, major strikes developing at the time. And the aims of the, the rich and the powerful within those societies, the, the bosses, the factory owners, the, the bankers and so on, was to keep the workers divided uh, from each other. And this was shown. This isn't just uh, something that Trotsky alleged. This was actually borne out by the facts. There were secret agreements made to annex territory to take over the colonies from each other. At, at the end of the First World War, the Germany and Turkey, who were defeated powers, had their colonial empires carved up between Britain and France, who set up artificial countries such as Iraq, Kuwait, and all the rest of it in their, in their pursuit uh, of profit. 